I am Chris Catalunya. Before we get into the shoe review today, go ahead and check out my Instagram, Chris Catalunya with the underscore at the end. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. And we are inching closer to that 8,000 subscriber mark here on this YouTube channel. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and do so because once we hit that 8,000 subscriber mark, I am going to give away some prizes in which I'm more than sure you're going to like. I have a Supreme Cat in the Hat tee in white in a size medium. I have a Supreme Balaclava face mask, size small, medium, black, and I have three bait magazines which contain accessories inside the, this one has like a bait sling bag, this one has the kids bait bag, and this one has the bait wallet. So if you want to win a prize, hit up that subscribe button. All right, now onto the shoe. This is a collaboration between Nike SB and Frog Skateboards on the Blazer Mids. The Nike Blazer is an iconic shoe and it's kind of crazy that it's regaining its popularity as of recent. It's just mind blowing to see that a shoe that was originally designed for basketball was even named after the Portland Trail Blazers of the NBA and that was made popular by an NBA ABA player, George the Iceman Gervin, who is from the San Antonio Spurs, repping the Spurs. How the shoe weaves through and attains that history and still finds a way to be that perfect shoe, that perfect application for skateboarding. Seriously, it's crazy. Now, Frog Skateboards is a company that is based out of Glendale, California. Whether they have an actual brick and mortar, I'm not too sure, but they do have an online presence in which they have an e-commerce website where they have some apparel, some beanies, and some skateboard decks online. They also have an Instagram and a YouTube channel which showcases their riders. Getting back to the shoe, this Nike SB Frog Skateboard shoe. This was released on March 16th of 2019, and I was actually lucky to come across the shoe. I knew it was dropping, but I didn't think it was dropping anywhere in Austin, Texas, or online. So it actually dropped on the Tactics website, in which I copped an L. But as I was scrolling down my Instagram feed, I saw that this was releasing locally here at No Comply Skate Shop, and they actually posted it the day of the release. So I was freaking out when I saw it at like 10 o'clock in the morning. I I had rushed over because I was actually trying to get the Mars shoes so I rushed over from kicking it and I rushed over to no comply which is like a 10 minute drive and I was like 30 minutes late in getting this shoe and they only had a size 12 available. Now this was a quick strike release which means this shoe is pretty pretty limited. Not all Nike SB accounts got this particular shoe. We have several skateboard companies in town and only one no comply got the shoe. So. Again, I was really lucky to have this one. In terms of retail, these joints were going for about $95 USD. Add a couple dollars just based on your taxes in your location. In terms of resale, looking at markets like StockX or GOAT, this is going for anywhere between like $240 and $370, just depending on the size that you are needing. And although the shoe is pretty limited, I didn't think that the cuteness factor of the shoe would let resale go up that high. It's kind of crazy. In getting the shoe, we are supplied with the Tiffany Blue and the Black Nike SB box in which half of the font is done up in white and the other half of the font is done up in that Tiffany Blue. At the front, we have the Nike sizing label right here. At the side, there is nothing, just the half and half. And then at the back, the Nike SB logo. As you open the box, we have this white tissue paper that features some lines on it that almost looks like a topographical map. Now the upper. It's mainly comprised of that hairy suede textile you'll see on the lateral side, at the toe box, on the medial, and and at the heel and it's pretty much done up in this like liquid lime color that's stated on the box and running my hand across it it actually feels pretty good to the touch it actually feels like a quality material i know some suede shoes that we've received from nike it feels kind of flaky kind of hard this is definitely not the case with this shoe it actually feels soft to the touch the lateral side of the shoe again it's mainly done in that liquid lime hairy suede material but prominent and in your face we have this nike swoosh right here done in a lawn color and and made of that same hairy suede material. The Nike Swoosh takes on a kind of weird shape. It's like unrefined, it's unproportional. It looks almost oblong, but I kind of like it on this particular shoe because it's kind of whimsical. So why not? Atop the Swoosh, we have this cute frog right here. He's just looking over, just peering over, and he's mainly comprised of embroidery. We have this black outline going all over. His eyes are done up in white and black stitching, and we have this mouth that is done up in red stitching. The fill of his body and his head is done in a lime green color, and I really like this because it's done up in like a carpeted way, like a Berber material. It's like raised and it feels pretty cool to the touch. Moving on to the medial side of the shoe, it's pretty much identical to the lateral side of the shoe with the absence 
presence of the little cute frog right here. So we'll actually move on to the front of the shoe, which is done in that hairy suede in that liquid lime color. This is the vamp. Now, from the toe box to the top of the collar, we have these extra panels right here that are raised on both the lateral and the medial sides of the shoe. This begins the formation of the lacing system, and punched in are the eyelets for the laces that feed through. When we first open the shoe box, the default set of laces that are provided on the shoe are these right here, and they're done up in a white color, a flat shape, and a cotton build. And what I like about these is that they feature ladybugs, pink ones at that. Those ladybugs play into that frog or that whimsical thing. Theming. Now, we are also supplied with other sets of laces that are actually tied onto the shoe laces itself, which is kind of weird because these are normally provided in like Ziploc bags, but not the case for this. They're actually just tied onto the shoelace. So, we are actually provided with a set of lime green laces and some pink laces to match the ladybugs. If I was able to cop this shoe in an 8.5 or 9, I would definitely rock those pink laces. It definitely has a contrast to it and it definitely makes it pop. And my second favorite would be these pink ladybugs right here. Now, behind those sets of laces is the tongue which is padded and it's enclosed in a lime green mesh or nylon material. As we get to the top of the tongue we have this white label that is stitched in and it also features some of that Nike SB branding woven in black threading and below that it says frog in lowercase letters. The reverse side is a continuation of that white label and it features the frog logo done up in different colors. It says frog skateboards made in Indonesia. Moving towards the heel of the shoe where the lateral meets the medial portion of the shoe, we have this rectangle hairy suede going on and this is covering the seams where these two meet. Above that features a cutout that is actually pretty wide along the collar and it actually reveals some of that gray hairy suede going on and it is actually soft to the touch much like the green hairy suede material. Now right there smack dab in the middle you see in lowercase letters the word frog again for frog skateboards and this is actually branded into that hairy suede material. Now we can reach into the inside of the shoe featuring the lining which is done up in this lime green meshing and it is padded on the lateral, on the medial, and the heel of the shoe providing some comfort to your ankle. In removing an insole you see a fabric bed done up in a lawn color that is placed on a thin piece of gray foam. Now towards the heel area it says zoom air because it does have a zoom air unit included on the insole and it also says Nike SB, the branding. Flipping it over is that gray foam right here and at the heel we have that zoom air unit and within this zoom air unit it includes like tensile fibers, some pressurized gas and this is to provide some cushioning when you make impact on the ground. Moving on to the midsole you can see that it is done up in a white rubber that wraps all the way around the shoe. Now the shoe is done in a vulcanized process in which they put the shoe together and then they mold it inside an oven in which it also cures inside that oven. Most shoes today are done up in a cup sole uh, process that means that they don't go into an oven because there's too much technology involved like you have your like Nike air unit or you have some like boost material that if you did put it into an oven all that material or all that technology would actually melt this won't melt in an oven now in stating that that's why our insole comes with that Nike zoom air technology because after the shoe is done cooking they can just place the insole inside the shoe versus most shoes today they already come with that Nike air unit inside the heel. Looking at the front of the shoe we have this extra layer of rubber going around the toe box area. This is called the bumper. Now the bumper helps to like slow down the process or slow down the deterioration of the shoe from like when your foot is dragging on the grip tape when you're skateboarding or when you're walking. It prevents or it stops or slows down that fraying. Even on the heel we have some of that raised rubber. This tab features that ladybug that we saw on the shoe laces which again plays into that frog or that whimsical theming which I enjoy. Moving on to the outsole of the shoe we can see some of the gum material being employed. It provides some of that stickiness, some of that extra traction and what I like about this is we have some wavy patterns going on, we have some zigzags going on which all play true to the blazer model. And this is probably one of the main reasons why skateboarders adopted this blazer from the basketball world. Yes, we have this upper that protects your foot. Yes, we have this ankle support right here, but mainly because of this sticky traction. Now sizing. Unfortunately, I do not have my size in this particular model. This is a size 12 in which I'm normally rocking a size 8.5 US or a 9 US. Now I have worn blazers before. I do own pairs of blazers. I'm usually rocking a size 8.5 and, and it fits pretty true to size. In terms of comfort, your typical blazer isn't very comfortable and it employs a thin piece of insole. Now this shoe, because it is a Nike SB and it employs that Nike Zoom Air unit on the insole, 
it's pretty comfortable. Now in terms of the upper mainly being comprised of that hairy suede material, suede is breathable but it's not super breathable like mesh material is, um, your foot is going to get a little bit hot in this shoe. There are some nylon meshing going on on the tongue of the shoe but for the most part your foot's going to get warm. Overall, I think this collaboration between Nike SB and Frog Skateboards on this Nike SB Blazer was very well executed. The textiles used on the shoe, the characters, the colors playing into that whimsical theming, and the affordability of the shoe being at that $95 price point at retail. I think this is a very well executed shoe and should have been a no brainer for you to make that attempt to cop. I'm just hoping I'm able to find someone that has an 8.5 or 9 and that's willing to trade for this 12 right here in hand. Maybe you want some cash on top, that's totally cool with me, I just need to have that shoe. Alright guys, I think this is a good stopping point for this video, what do you think about this shoe from Nike SB and Frog Skateboards, the Blazer? What do you think about this whimsical or this frog theming happening on this shoe and what do you think about resale about it? It being from between $240 and $370 on a shoe that was originally retail $95. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Go ahead and check out my Instagram, Chris got the Luna with the underscore at the end. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. And once we hit that 8,000 subscriber mark here on this YouTube channel, I'm definitely going to give away some of these prizes. All right, guys, I am Chris got the Luna, and we will check you next time. Cheers, Sigina.